Thank you, Holy Spirit. Precious beloved of the Lord, what a joy and blessing it is to come up again live on day 95, declaring shout out aloud, shout aloud, shout aloud, according to the word of the Lord in Psalm 95. I want us to pray as we get along in the name of Jesus. Father, we continue to pray, thanking you for you are a good God. Father, on this wonderful time that we are proclaiming day 95 according to your plan according to your people your purposes or oh my father according to your goodness father we trust you for everything that you're able to do oh father we give you praise we give you all the adoration that is due to your name oh god father that there is none who can compare to you you are the great God. You are the mighty God. You are the conquering land of the tribe of Judah. The one who was and is and is to come. The Amen. The faithful witness. Lord, you are the faithful witness. And we come to thank you because of your goodness and mercy towards us, our Father. We glorify you. We honor you because you are a good God. We honor you because you reign forever. We honor you. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 95. Father, we pray, open our eyes that we may see wonderful things out of your law. We pray that, Father, open our eyes that we may see wonderful things out of your law. Open our eyes, O oh God, that we may see wonderful things out of our law. We also want to command the gates of time. The word of God tells us in the book of Psalm 24, verse 7, Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up everlasting doors, <clears throat> that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. He is the King of glory. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. He is the King of glory. Psalm 95. The word of the Lord says, Hallelujah. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and his mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, his hands formed the dry land. Psalm 95 verse 6 says, Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture. The flock under His care. Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts, as you did at Meribah, as you did that day at Massa in the desert, where your fathers tested and tried me, though they had not seen what I did. For 40 years, I was angry with that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray, and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. Psalm 95. We come to ben mention this and particularly look at the first part. We have two verses that are working together as one part. This is Psalm 95 verse 1 and 2. It says, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us go before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Beloved, this gives us direction on how to approach the throne of grace. It says, Let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Beloved, this is a practical session that I encourage you to find time in Psalm 95 and pray more. Father, we thank you, we exalt you, we magnify your name. Father, there is none who can compare to you. Lord, as David sat down and prayed before the Lord, 
So do we lift up our hands and pray. So do we lie prostrate and pray. So do we kneel and pray. So do we bow down. As your word says, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock, our salvation. Proverbs 23. The word of the Lord says, when you sit down to rule, when you sit down to dine with a ruler, says when you sit to dine with a ruler, not well what is said before you and put a knife to your throat if you are given to gluttony. Do not crave his delicacies for that food is deceptive. Beloved, these proverbs from Proverbs 23, we see proverbs that are in sets of three verses, two verses four verses, and even others a longer bit, a bit longer of the passage that you're reading. Psalm 21, 23, 1 tells you to really exercise a lot of caution, especially when it comes to this kind of invites where you have to sit and dine with rulers. You have to note well what before you. Because it says again, that food, that don't crave is delicacies, for that food is deceptive. Verse 4 says, don't wear yourself out to get rich. Have the wisdom to show restraint. Cast but a glance at riches and they are gone, for they will surely sprout wings and fly out to the sky like an eagle. Again, that's another set of two verses that make one proverb. We go in verse 20, 36, 26 verse 6 it says, Do not eat the food of a stingy man. Do not crave his delicacies. For he is the kind of man who is always thinking about the cost. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is far with you, is not with you. You will vomit up the little you have eaten, and you will have wasted your compliments. Verse 9 says, Do not speak to a fool, for he will scorn the wisdom of your words. Verse 10. Do not move an ancient boundary stone set up by your forefathers. Again, we see a repetition of this particular proverb, but this particular time it's in a set of two, where it says, For their defender is strong, and he will take up their case against you. We saw this scripture again in Proverbs 22 verse 28, that says, Do not move an ancient boundary stone. It says again, Apply your heart, to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge this is a process called prayer when you are in the place of prayer you apply your heart to instruction to hear what is the Lord saying and your ears to words of knowledge vis-a-vis -vis, hear the Word of God by reading it by memorizing it by studying it the five points that we always use when we are declaring and studying the scripture number one is meditate Number two is memorize. Number three is study. Number four is read. And number five is hear the word of God. These are ways that our ears will be able to tune in to words of knowledge. Verse 13 says, don't hold, don't withhold discipline from a child. If you punish him with a rod, you will not die. Punish him with a rod and you will save his soul from death. Verse 15 and 16, Proverbs 23, says, My son, if your heart is wise, then my heart will be glad. My innermost being will rejoice when your lips speak what is right. Verse 17, Don't let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. Listen, my son, and be wise, and let your heart Keep your heart on the right path. Don't join with those who drink too much wine and gorge themselves on meat. For drunkards and gluttons become poor and drowsiness clothes them in rugs. Verse 22. Listen to my your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth. Hallelujah. And do not sell it. Get wisdom, discipline and understanding. The father of a righteous man has great joy. He who has a wise son delights in him. May your father and mother be glad. May she who gave birth to you rejoice. Verse 26. 
My son, give your heart and let your eyes keep to my ways. For a prostitute is a deep pit and a wayward wife is a narrow well. Like a bandit she lies in wait and multiplies the unfaithful among men. Verse 29. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strive? Who has complaints? Who has needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger over wine. Who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it is red. When it sparkles in the cup. When it goes down smoothly. Verse 22. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Your eyes will see strange things. So your eyes will see strange sights. And your mind imagine confusing things. You'll be like one sleeping on the high seas, lying on top of the rigging. They hit me, you will say. But I am not hurt. They bet me, but I did not feel it. When will I wake up so I can find another drink? Beloved, that's Proverbs 23, all the way to verse 35. We give glory to God for allowing us into this word. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. The word of the Lord. It says, again I looked and I saw all the oppression that was taking place under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed and they have no comforter. Power was on the side of the oppressors and they have no comforter. And I declared that the death who had already died are happier than the living who are still alive. But better than both is he who has not yet been, who has not yet seen the evil that is done under the sun. And again I saw that all labor and all achievements spring from man's labor of en some spring from man's envy of his neighbor. This too is meaningless and a chasing after the wind. Verse 5. The fool folds his hands and ruins himself. Better one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. Verse 7. Again I saw something meaningless under the sun. There was a man all alone. Without neither son nor brother, there was no end to his, oil, to his toil, and yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asked, and why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? This too is meaningless and a miserable business. Beloved Ecclesiastes chapter 4, from verse 1 to verse 8, is one particular piece of instruction. <clears throat> we see it over there. I want you to keep praying and telling God, open my eyes that I may see wonderful things out of your law. Let's pause before we continue and take time and pray and tell the Lord, my father, grant me the spirit of wisdom and revelation that I may know you better. Open the eyes of my understanding. Flood me with light. In the name of Jesus, come on, pray. Tell the Lord to open your understanding. Tell the Lord to open your eyes that you may see wonderful things in his law. Yes, this is a continuous prayer. We are not stopping this prayer. We are pushing on in this prayer. My Father, my God, open my eyes that I may see wonderful things out of your law. Verse 9 says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls with no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Listen, better a poor but wise youth than an old but foolish king who no longer knows how to take warning. The youth may have come from the prison to the kingship, or he may have been born in poverty with his kingdom. I saw that all who lived and walked under the sun followed the youth, the king's processor, successor. There was no end to the people that were before them. But those who came later were not pleased with the successor. This too is meaningless and are chasing after the wind. Beloved, what a joy to be able to get this wonderful light and lamp onto our feet. The Lord leading us and we follow in Jesus' name. We continue on to the book of Numbers. Numbers 27. Numbers is actually one of those. Uh, numbers 28. Sorry, Numbers 28. We read already Numbers 27. It says daily offerings, Numbers 28. 
It says, The Lord said to Moses, Give this command to the Israelites and say to them, See that you present to me at the appointed time the food of my offerings made by fire, an aroma pleasing to me. Say to them, This is the offering made by fire that you are to present to the Lord. Two lambs a year old without defect, as regular burnt offering each day. Prepare one lamp in the morning and the other at twilight, together with a grain offering of a tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with quarter of a hin of oil for the pressed olives. This is the regular offering instituted at Mount Sinai as a pleasing aroma, an offering made to the Lord by fire. The accompanying drink offering is to be a quart of a hin of a fermented drink with each lamp. Pour out the drink offering to the Lord at the sanctuary. Prepare the second lamp at twilight along with the same kind of grain offering and drink offering that you prepare in the morning. This is an offering made by fire and a pre an aroma pleasing to the Lord. These are daily offerings. And basically now we see that instead of presenting the lambs and presenting the fermented drink, we are meant to present our prayers morning and evening, morning and in twilight. It's a powerful time to be able to pray. We see Numbers 28.9. It says, On the Sabbath day, make an offering of two lambs, a year old without defect, together with its drink offering and a grain offering of two-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. This is the burnt offering for every Sabbath in addition to the regular burnt offering and its drink offering. It says in verse 11, On the first day of every month, present to the Lord a burnt offering of two young bulls, one ram and seven male lambs, a year old, all without defect. Let me pause here and mention that the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross was an ultimate sacrifice. That these kind of offerings, we see them here, they show us that the work with God is not one that is supposed to be just, you know, regular. It contains sacrifice. And sacrifice is not only about your, uh, your resources. Sacrifice is also about you yourself. You become the living sacrifice before the Lord. You may give all that you have, but if at all you are not able to give of yourself on the altar, then that will not be an acceptable, pleasing aroma. We see that the offerings are changing and the size is changing with the commitment of every level. There is a daily offering. There is what we call the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the Sabbath offerings. And now we see the monthly offerings. That the monthly offerings are for the first day of every month. Present an offering of two young bulls. These ones are not cheap. Bulls are not something you just come across. Bulls are expensive to the people who are offering them at that time. A ram and seven male lambs a year old, all without a defect. Even if you are to look at the current cost of these animals, right now, if somebody was to present two young bulls, one ram and seven male lambs a year old, that would be quite an offering to the Lord. It says in verse 12, with each bull, there is to be a grain offering of ten tenths of an ephah, of fine flour mixed with oil, with the ram, a grain offering of ten, two tenths and an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. And with each lamb, a grain offering of a tenth and an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. This is for a burnt offering, a pleasing aroma, an offering made to the Lord by fire. With each bull, there is to be a drink offering and a half a hin. With the ram, a third of a hin. And with the lamb, each lamb a quarter of a hin. This is the monthly burnt offering to be made at each new moon during the year. Besides the regular burnt offering with its drink offering, one male goat is to be presented to the Lord as a sin offering. Talking about the Passover now. Beloved, let me highlight this and mention that now we are under the grace of God. You cannot just be bound to a few of the ways of giving. 
the heart that gives out of abundance of joy, the heart that gives out of worship to the king, that is the heart that the Lord delights in. He does not delight in a heart that is like the Pharisee who was saying that I also offer or I also offer a tithe of my deal. I offer a tithe of my spices. Yet God was looking at the Pharisee and he was seeing he is just self-righteous and not being able to worship God in the right way. In fact, he missed the visitation of the Messiah. How did you pray for yourself and tell the Lord, open my eyes to be sensitive to your timing, to be sensitive to your timing. Beloved, help is needed when help is most needed. Can you imagine if you have a flat tire on the highway and you are not able to change it, you will not be able to move on. And if somebody just stopped at the right time and cha helped you change that tire, that would be the right help you needed more than any other thing. When you pray, you'll be in the timing of God. You'll be able to do exactly, exceedingly abundantly above all that you ever ask, think, or imagine according to the power that reigns within us in Christ Jesus. It says in Numbers chapter 28, mentioning about the Passover, verse 16. It says, on the 14th day of the first month, the Lord's Passover is to be held. On the 15th day of this month, there is to be a festival for seven days. Eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. <clears throat> it says, present to the Lord an offering made by fire, a burnt offering of two young bulls, one ram and seven male lambs, a year old, all without defect. We see that this particular offering is similar to the monthly offering. It says, with each bull, prepare a grain offering of three tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, with the ram two tenths, and with each of the seven lambs one tenth. Include a male goat as a sin offering to make atonement for you. Prepare these in addition to the regular morning burnt offering. In this way, prepare the food for the offering made by the fire each day for seven days as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. It is prepared in addition to the regular burnt offering and his drink offering. On the seventh day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. It says in verse 26, on the, on the day of fast fruits, when you present to the Lord an offering of new grain during the feast of weeks, hold a sacred assembly. And do no regular work. Present a burnt offering of two young bulls, one ram and seven male lambs a year old, as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. With each bull, there is to be an offering, a grain offering, or three tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, with a ram two tenths, and with each of the seven lambs one tenth. Include one male goat to make atonement for you. Prepare prepare this together with their drink offerings in addition to the regular burnt offerings and in regain offerings be sure the animals are without defect again beloved here we see a set of the wonderful feasts of the lord the feast of trumpets the feast of weeks we are going to see all these things as they come up in the book of numbers but most importantly, we see that the gospel of the kingdom is a gospel of sacrifice, is a gospel of instruction, of being able to obey what the Holy Spirit leads and what he says to us. How would we come to align ourselves and shout aloud the goodness of God, that we will publish it in our prayer closet, we'll publish it everywhere. Shout aloud when you go before God. Shout aloud and declare, Father, I beseech you, I trust you, I put my confidence in you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. The Gospel of John, chapter 5. John, John, John. John 5. The word of the Lord says, Some time later, before we proclaim this, let me tell you something about the powerful word of God. You may hear us proclaiming this word and the Lord putting us in this season of the night watches to be able to proclaim this word because the word of God is power. 
It is a sword. There are some battles you don't fight. You just stand and declare the word. You just stand and proclaim it. Just speak. You, are, you reach the area of the war and instead of doing anything else, just stand. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 that indeed after that doing everything else to do, stand therefore. So standing in the place of prayer and proclaiming the word of God is very, very powerful. John chapter 5, it says, Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. We are just reading about the feasts of the Lord, the book of Numbers. And now we come here and we find the Lord Jesus Christ fulfilling the very feasts that we are reading in the book of Numbers. It says, now there is in Jerusalem near the ship gate a pool, which in Aramaic means is called Bethsda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 30 years, 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in that condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. When I'm trying to get in, someone else goes ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once, the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which that this took place was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, the man who made me well said, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was. Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews, that it was Jesus who had made him well. Verse 16. So because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jews persecuted him. Jesus said to them, My father is always at work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason, the Jews tried all the harder to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was also even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Verse 19, Jesus gave them this answer. I tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing because whatever the father does, the son does also. Verse 20, for the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, to your amazement, he will show him even greater things than this. For just as the son, just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, even so, the Son of Man gives life to him who is pleased to give it. Verse 22. Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all his judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. I tell you the truth. A time is coming and has now come. When the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this. A time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to live. Those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. By myself, I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but the one who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not valid. John chapter 8 verse 14, we are going to hear this again. Jesus answered in John 8 14. He said, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is, is valid. 
for I know where I come from and where I'm going, but you have no idea where I come from and where I'm going. This he says here, aligning it when you read in verse five, when you read it in in uh, when you read um, John five. John 5 um, verse 31 says, If I testify about myself, my testimony is not valid. Verse 32, There is another who testified in my favor, and I know that his testimony about me is valid. Verse 33, You have sent to John, and he has testified to the truth. Not that I accept human testimony, but I mention it so that you may be saved. Verse 35, I have testimony weightier than that of John. For every work that the Father has given me to finish, and which I am doing, testifies that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice, nor seen his form, nor does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one he has sent. Verse 39, you diligently study the scriptures, because you think that by them you possess eternal life. They are those, these are the scriptures that testify about me. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept praise from men. But I know, I know, I know you. And I know that you have done the love of God. You don't have the love of God in your hearts. I have come in my father's name and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. Verse 44, how can you believe if you praise from one another? I'm reading John chapter 5, verse 54, verse 44. It says, how can you believe if you accept praise from one another? Yet, make no effort to obtain the praise that comes from the only God. So do not think I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom your hopes are set. If you believed Moses... You would believe in me, for he wrote about me. But since you did not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? Beloved, our Lord Jesus Christ is making a statement here that is very, very powerful. And he's speaking and telling the people that Moses is your accuser because they are under the law. So because they are under the law, they are judged by the law, they must live by the law. Beloved, when it comes to the issue of giving, and we find ourselves saying, you must give a tithe, you must give a tithe. A tithe was given under the law. And it's only a tenth of your, past, of your income and so on. If you're only limited to the tithe, then there's still some level of revelation that you need to come to. Because in the new covenant we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, he is our law. He is our sacrifice. He is, is everything that we can even give all of ourselves. In Romans chapter 12 says that give yourself. It says that as a living sacrifice. So when you find yourself being able to give a tithe and then you say I just give even my tithe. I cannot be able to support this widow. I cannot be able to do something else for the poor. Then you will get that you don't have the right revelation. The issues about finance when it comes to God is about giving. There is no shortcut. That's the principle the Lord gives it. It's a principle that... God has set in place, if you need a financial breakthrough, you have to keep listening to him. And that's why Numbers 24-7 says that the basket, the bucket will continue to flow with water and your seed will be full, of, will be having an abundance of water and that your kingdom will be exalted more than that of Agag. This shows that it's a level of revelation that if you are coming to flow, to, if you are coming under Moses, then Moses is your accuser. And let me tell you, you cannot live under the law. If you live by the law, it is not possible. You cannot do all these things that have been stipulated in the laws, in the Old Testament and so on. We must come to the place of freedom because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. What are we saying then? Should we not give our tithes? No, by no means. We should give our tithes and even give more because we are imitators of God. He says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1, Be imitators of God, therefore as dearly loved children. Our God does not look at us at what we are able to give him. Let me tell you, beloved, 
Our Father delights in obedience. Our Father delights in us shouting aloud, mentioning and saying, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of salvation to everyone who believes, first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. That when you have, to, when you meet those who doubt, be merciful to them. Be merciful. Do not condemn them and say, you guys, you don't know. You are all going to hell. You are not going to go to heaven. That one is not ours to do. We are supposed to be imitators of God. That the same way God looks at us when we are in our sinful state and he still forgives us every moment and allows the sinner to get a sunshine and allows the, the righteous to get a sunshine. He causes his light to shine on all. Is that where we are being told, be imitators of God? I come, Lord, help me to imitate you. Help me to become like you, Lord. Help me to reflect you that I will be a true reflection of my Father in heaven. Verse 2 says, And live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of any greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk or coarse joking which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, don't be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but you are now light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord? Verse 11. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper. Rise up from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, always giving thanks. It says in verse 19, Speak to one another with psalms, hymns and spiritual songs sing and make music in your hearts to the lord always give thanks to god the father for everything in the name of our lord jesus christ submit to one another out of reverence for christ wives submit to your husbands as to the lord for the husband is the head of the wife and as christ is the head of the church his body of which he is the savior Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one has ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect a husband. Beloved, we come now to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 10. Beloved, this proclamation of the word of God is the most powerful warfare you have ever engaged in in your prayer life. 
Proclaiming the word of God at the gate of midnight is power on itself. That there are moments where you don't know what to pray, you don't know what to do. In addition to praying in tongues, you must pray with understanding and pray specific prayers directed unto the Lord from His Word. Because that way you're speaking His language. It's like you're speaking, you're in His environment. The worst thing is to try to do spiritual things in a physical environment. It cannot work. You will try it, it will be so difficult, it will be so strange. So strange, it will look strange. Because the things of God are not comprehended by the mind. They are discerned in the spirit. That's the way, same way you cannot explain how the engine of an aircraft works. You cannot explain how that big metallic three-ton bird is able to stay in the air. Whereby if you just try and throw your phone up, it will fall down. And it is less than the kilos that an aircraft has to be up there in the sky. If you try to explain how simple things work like a bulb, you will not be able to know how water is translated into electricity. But when you get into the realm of physics... Physics is able to teach you what is making water turn from water into hydroelectric power that is now tapped and separated into three. Live, neutral, and there's another third one I cannot remember. That you find that the electricity has been separated into some other level of power known as three-phase power. Hey, there are different types of power. There are different types of voltage when it comes to power. That's why you cannot use your shaving machine with the same power you use for that sugarcane extracting machine. You cannot be able to use the same power to fly a Boeing 757 to fly, uh, to, to drive a normal scooter on the road. What I'm talking about here is that you must connect to the real power. The real power is the word of God. You may be able to look for prophecy everywhere. You may run everywhere. You see this man of God. You go to that conference. You come from that conference. You come to this one. You go to this one. You go to that one. But I'm telling you, beloved, unless you settle down on the word of God and tell the Lord, Father, I come. I come. Teach me your word. Show me your ways. Teach me your word. Summon your power. Show me your strength. Until you come to that place. You cannot shout aloud. We shout aloud of that which we have seen, what we have known, what we have experienced. We thank God because God continues to test us, continues to mold us, continues to fix us. And I'm telling you, a time is coming. We are where we are going is just walking in the counsel and the power of God. Revelation 10.1 says, Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was robed in a cloud with a rainbow around his, above his head. His face was like a sun, and his legs were like fiery pillars. He was holding a little scroll, which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot on the sea, and his left foot on the land. And he gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. And when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven say, Seal up what the seven thunders have said, and do not write it down. Then the angel I had seen standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and all that is in them, the earth and all that is in it, the sea and all that is in it. And he said, There will be no more delay, and all that is in it. And the sea and all that is in it. And he said, there will be no more delay. Revelation 10 verse 7. It says, but in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished just as he, just as he announced to his servants the prophets. Then the voice that I heard from heaven spoke to me once more. Go, take the scroll that lies open in the hand of the angel who was standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and asked him,
to give me the little scroll. He said to me, Take it and eat it. It will turn stomach sour, but in your mouth it will be as sweet as honey. I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it, and it was tasting as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. Then I was told, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. Beloved, we are in the time zone of Kenya. It is the third day of April 2022 and it's 1.12 in the a.m. In another time zone, we are still on the second day of April 2022, a different time zone. Especially one of those places that uh, comes much later, the place called Honolulu. Honolulu is now in the afternoon. It's in the afternoon of the second day of, it's actually 12.13 in Honolulu in the United States of America on the second day of April. We know that and understand that the timing of God is not like the timing of man. That we come to understand that the things that we see are not as though as they look. And that's why we come in the midnight gate to say, Father, as we have appeared, open up the heavens that we may shout aloud of your victory in Jesus' name. You could be here watching on Facebook Watch. Come across this video. The word of the Lord says in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's a joy to be able to come from darkness into light, just as the scripture reminds us and tells us that you once were darkness, but now you are the light. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart God raised you from the dead, Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone, the new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Beloved, if you pray that prayer, you are now a child of God and it will be a joy for you to continue to live with him and for him. Do drop us an inbox and be able to connect with us on WhatsApp on the number plus 254-722-087087. Also, I want to encourage you to join the journey of 150 Days of Psalms. Now we are on day 95 of 150 Days of Psalms, Season 5. By this, God has helped us and we continue to walk in his counsel and his might. We want to pray and thank God even as we conclude the broadcast on the Facebook Watch. Father, our God, we thank you for giving us the knowledge and the revelation about shouting aloud and that knowing that you are the true light, Father. We thank you, our Father God, that we come close to you with knowledge and understanding. We continue to pray for the journey of 150 days of Psalms. Continue to reveal yourself to us. Continue to grant us more influence and more affluence into your things. Lord, reveal unto us great and marvelous things that we do not know of. Father, we also pray that you shine your light above our heavens. Lord, we command that the heavens will declare the glory of God. The heavens will declare the glory of God over our lives, O God. The Father, we will obey you, not out of a point, Lord God, of trying to, uh, trying to, to, to be legalistic about it, Lord God, but being able to worship you, Father, being able to be together with you, aligning ourselves to you, knowing that, Father, you are a God who richly blesses us, O oh my Father. You delight in the prosperity of your servants. Father God, we thank you that poverty is far from us. Lord God, we thank you because of the prophetic that we are declaring every wall of division that was standing against us in our, pro, in our breakthrough is right now being scattered in the name of Jesus. We pray, let your hand continue to be upon us. 
Help us, O oh God, even as we shine, we shine your light in every category. We thank you, our Father, because of what you're doing in our lives, O oh God. May your favor surround us as a shield. My God, we pray that the heavens will be open, even as we call that, Father, we can never be the same. Lord God, we cannot share, show up every day at the same time and remain the same. So, Father, anywhere that, Lord, we are not doing that which you want us to do speedily, we stand with the angels in Revelation chapter 10 and say there will be no more delay in the name of Jesus. Any level of delay that may be there, we come against it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we bless you in Jesus' mighty name. We also pray, Father, that we'll continue to worship you with our substance. We'll be able to worship you with our finance, with our life, with our cars, with our material things. My God, with our families, with our children, that we will serve you all the days of our lives and we will honor you to the praise of your glory. Father, we pray for the journey of 150 days of Psalms. Continue to shine your light over people in different nations and different locations. For your name, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we continue to pray. Amen. Beloved of Facebook and YouTube, continue to share this broadcast. We thank God for allowing us into season 5. We've seen the Lord helping us and moving us easily in every category and in every level. Until next time, I'll see you on the Facebook watch. Shalom.